500 years. 500 years. Yeah. Can you imagine living in a world where you had 500 years before you had children? Wow. You imagine all that time just to do what you wanted. In fact, you've studied theology, correct? Yes, yes I did. Do you remember the name of the oldest man mentioned in the Bible? Yes, Methuselah. Okay, how old was he? 969 years old. Do you realize what you could achieve in 969 years? Never thought of it, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, 960, you'd have 600 years to get through high school. Well, that's not exactly what I would like to do. <laughs> well, even if you failed the first 500 years, you could still be a genius. Sounds better, sounds better. Right? So, yeah. in other words, the stress on people who could live vast ages would be much lower than the stress Good that point. we face today because yeah. you have to get your PhD by the time you're 35 or 45 or you're, fi you're finished, yeah, right? Kind of so you, you've already got three children. Yes. Noah had another 500 and 460 years. To still get some. To still get some, right? Yeah. And it must have been a rather shock, mustn't it? You know, 500 <laughs> years, no children, then whammy. All of a sudden, there's crying little babies everywhere. So it's a different world. And this is what people have to come to grips with. The picture of the world that God made, you need to know what it is in order to answer the question, what would the proof be mm -hmm. that that has happened? Mm -hmm. In fact, just to clarify that picture, go back to Genesis chapter 1 for us. You see, the trend that we see around us, molecules evolving into organized human beings who are trying now to clone themselves so they can get spare parts and fix up their bodies and live longer, is the opposite of the truth. Mm -hmm. Read verse 31 of Genesis chapter oh, 1. Genesis chapter 1, 31st verse, you said, sir? Mm -hmm. Okay. We have, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Question, Romulus, is the world very good today? Well, it's not. Well, I'll be honest, speaking as an Australian, I come from a place where the grass is green all year, the fruit trees have fruit all year, I can go swimming all year. Okay, listen to the viewers. <laughs> Pack your luggage, go to Australia. <laughs> and I come to Romania and to Hungary and there's funny white stuff falling out of the sky that freezes me to death. <laughs> and of course, if you freeze to death, it cuts down your lifespan. We, we brought Mr. Mackay here to preserve him. He doesn't understand <laughs> <it>. yes. <laughs> But in reality, your climate is far worse yes, because you've got very cold winters and we don't. Mm. Problem, of course, is we have long droughts. Mm. And yes. when the ground dries out and the grass dries, the animals die, mm. we've got no food too. So it, mm. it can be just as bad in a yes, totally exactly. different yes, way. Yes, yes. But either way, the world is not good anymore. Mm. Okay, now in all of your theological training, Genesis 1 and 2 says God made the world good. Yes. Have you ever thought of how big the sharks would have been? I can tell you haven't. No. And you see, most of us don't think that way because we think the Bible is a religious book. Mm. Floor number one. The Bible is a book about religion, but it's also a book about the weather. Mm -hmm. It's a book about the food. Mm -hmm. In fact, when the world was very good, have a look at what it says on the diet that people and animals ate. Would you read us verse 29 and verse 30 of chapter 1? And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the, which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, when there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. Was there any McDonald's in the Garden of Eden? Nope. Any meat burger joints? Nope. Did you eat tripe soup? <laughs> yes, I did, a lot. <laughs> Not then you didn't, right? No. You see, the interesting thing is those two verses we read, they don't normally fit in the context of religion. No. That's about what things ate. Yes. And the funny thing is when you go in Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2, you learn that man was created to live forever. Yeah. But there was one thing he wasn't supposed to do. Mm. He was not to eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, because mm. when he did that, what did God say would happen? He would die. He would die. 
But you see, we've just been talking about people like Methuselah and Noah. And in fact, up till Noah's flood, even after sin came in, people lived to be nearly a thousand. Yes. Yes. Right? So therefore, the world then is different than it is now. So it started out very good, then man sinned, and it became mm, so-so, mm. but still much better than it is now. Yeah. The ground that they ate their plants from was still the ground that God had created. Yes. Yes. But then man became so obnoxious, God washed the world away with a flood. Right. And now the dirt is just anything. Yeah. You can live in some parts of the world and try and eat a balanced vegetable diet, and you'll die. I mean, I'm thinking of Mexico yeah. because there's no iodine in the soil in many places. Mm. So you could try to be the best vegetarian you wanted, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't work. As the flood washed all living and actually everything died, when the waters went back, all that death went into the soil. Yeah. And it made the soil worse than it was before. Well, you've now got a different soil, yes. right? And it's no longer the good soil yes, that God yes. made. Mm. It's not only been cursed because of man's mm. sin, it's now been totally rewashed yeah, around the yeah, world. Yeah. And some good parts have ended up yes. here, bad parts yes. there, and in between all mm. over the place. Mm. But you see, here's the question I want to get to. In a world where people live to be nearly a thousand, how big would a thousand year old shark be? Wow. Big. Very big. big. You see, we've already established the data. Fossil shark, yes. present day shark. Yes. Fact, you take the tape measure, the shark never stops Stop growing it. as long as it lives. Mm -hmm. Ipso facto, if you argue in a court of law, therefore the older it gets, the bigger it must be. Mm -hmm. Now, the funny thing is you can find this pattern in many creatures. So if you come to Australia where I live and you come out into the forest behind my house, you will see we have lizards. Mm -hmm. Do you have many lizards here in Romania? Well, we have some. Have not some. Many. Are they big? No, they're small. Ah, not they're small. Well, look, where I live, we don't get any cold winter. And by the coast, we don't get too much drought. So therefore, there's plenty of green grass and plants for all the lizards to eat as much as they want. Mm -hmm. So guess what we've noticed about them? They're growing. They're growing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so lizards are in the reptile family and the reptiles that we have in Australia today never stop growing as long as they live. The older they get, the bigger they are. So let's take an imaginary journey. Have you heard of Alaska? Yes, of course. What do you know about Alaska? Well, it's cold. Yeah. Very cold. <laughs> colder than Hungary, colder than yes, Romania. Yes, exactly. In fact, there's snow on the ground for nearly nine months a year. It's it's a place where it's hard to tell if the snow on the ground is the first snow of next winter or just left over from last winter. <laughs> yeah, right? Very cold. So how much vegetables do you think there is around all year in Alaska? Oh, not much. Do you think it's easy to get food in Alaska? Not exactly. Okay, now it's very difficult. So how big do you think the snakes are in Alaska? Oh, are there any snakes in Alaska at all? No snakes in Alaska no at, snakes all. at all. None whatsoever. It's too cold. Mm. But as you come further south mm. from Alaska, as the weather starts to get warmer, you get down onto the edge of the USA, the edge of Canada, mm -hmm. the snakes are that big, about a third of a meter. Mm -hmm. Now coming from Australia, when I first saw one, I thought it was a garden worm. <laughs> <laughs> you see, because I live in a warm place. Mm -hmm. And the warmer it gets, the snakes can get more and more food. Mm -hmm. In fact, by the time you get to Brazil, where there's almost no winter, or in Australia, well, I have pythons in my backyard, and they never stop growing as long as they live until you kill them, because that cuts their lifespan down, yeah. right? Yeah. And we have huge pythons, you know, five meters, six meters long. But when you dig the pythons out of the rocks, you've seen those double hitched trailers on the motorways driving yeah. up from Italy up through Germany, yeah, yeah. massive. Well, that's how long the snakes were when you dig them out of the rocks. Now, I've got a... Um, a dinosaur tooth here. There you are, we've looked at it before. So you may as well have a quick look at it again. Well, what's the word dinosaur mean, do you know? A big, yeah. frightening lizard. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's in the reptile type yeah, family. Yeah. Now, everything we can find out about the dinosaurs tells us that they had the same sort of growth pattern that we see in the lizards and the crocodiles. And the interesting thing is, we don't have any more dinosaurs. No, we don't. But they were very impressive, many of mm -hmm. them, correct? 